Hello everyone, welcome back to the Linear Algebra series. Today I'm going to be teaching you two really important topics in Linear Algebra. Echelon form and row reduced echelon form. These topics are really important because you need them to carry out row operations, which is essential in any linear algebra question. So now let's see what these three rules mean. So this is for echelon form. There's echelon form and there's row reduced echelon form. These three rules are only for echelon form. So now let's see what the first rule means. Let's see what the first rule means using an example. So all non-zero rows are above any rows of all zeros. So a non-zero row means any row with a number other than zero. So we can see that row one has a one. So that means it has a non-zero number. So it's a non-zero row. So now let's look at row two. It has a one, it has a four, it has a five. So it's a non-zero row because it contains numbers other than zero. Row three, again, it's the same thing. It contains a two and a six. And row four does not contain any number other than zero. In other words, it's an all zero row. So every number in this row is a zero. So that, so the first rule means that R4 should be below R1, R2, and R3. That's essentially what it's saying. And R4 is below, right? Because row one is the top row, second row, third row, and fourth row. So that means the first rule is satisfied for this matrix. Now let's look at what the second row mean, second rule means. This can be a little confusing, but let's figure it out and I'll make it easy for you guys. So the leading entry, the leading entry means the first non-zero number from the left of each non-zero row after the first occurs to the right of the leading entry of the previous row. So what this means that each row that isn't all zeros. So we're only looking at row one, row two, and row three. Starts, so each row starts with its first number at least one place to the right compared to the first number in the row above it. So that means that this one in row two has to be to the right. So it has to be to the right of this one. And it is. So that means that it's the, the rule holds true for row one and row two. Now let's look at row two and row three. Let's look at the comparison. What is the leading entry for row three? It's this two right here because it's the first non-zero entry. So now this two has to be to the right of this one right here. And it is. So that means this condition holds true for row three and row two as well. And then row four, it has no leading entries because it doesn't have a non-zero number. So that means the second rule is also satisfied. So that means that this matrix satisfies the first two rules. Now the third rule, we're going to come to it later because it's sometimes considered a part of echelon form but sometimes it's also considered a part of RREF, which is row reduced echelon form. We'll be looking at it right now. So now let's look at row reduced echelon form and see what that means. So a matrix is in row reduced echelon form if it satisfies these two equations. these two rules. So now let's look at an example of a matrix. So we have 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. So this is our matrix. So now let's see 
what these rules mean. So the first rule states that a matrix is in row reduced echelon form if it satisfies all the conditions of echelon form and these two. So it has to satisfy the first, these two right here. It has to satisfy these two rules. and these two rules. So now, our first step to check if this matrix is in RREF is to see if it satisfies the condition of echelon form. So now let's see. The all zero row, so row four, is below R1, R2, and R3. R4 is the only non zero is the only zero row because it has all zeros. R1, R2, and R3 are all non-zero rows. So the first condition of echelon form, let's look at the first condition of echelon form. All non-zero rows are above any rows of all zeros. So that means the first condition is satisfied for this matrix. Let's look at the second. So we know that the second rule states that the leading entries, which are these three, have to be to the right of the one in the row above them. So this one should be to the right of this one, and it is. And this one should be to the right of this one, and it is. So that's great. So now we know that the conditions of echelon form are satisfied. But that's not all. We have to check these two rules as well. So the first rule states that the leading entry in each non-zero row is 1. That means that the first number in each non-zero row has to be 1. And it is because we have a 1, 1, and 1 here. So that's right. And now our second rule says that each leading one is the only non-zero entry in its column. So that means that in, so let's look at the first leading one. This is the first leading one. So we have to look at the column where this one is present. So it has to be the only non-zero entry in the column. And it is because there are three zeros below it. And none of them, and, and all of them are zeros, and they're not non-zero. Now let's look at the second one. The second row. Again, the leading, each leading one, this is the leading one. So each leading one is the only non-zero entry in the column. And it is the only non-zero entry because everything above or below it is zeros. And now, finally, the third one, the third column, which states that there's a one here, and that is the leading one, and every number above or below it is a zero. So that means that the second condition is also satisfied. We don't look at the fourth row because there's no leading entry there. It's only talking about the leading ones or the first ones in each row. So that's essentially row reduced echelon form and echelon form simplified. Thank you so much. And I hope you all learned a lot from this video. This is a really integral topic in linear algebra. Thank you. And I hope you all like and subscribe.